Gods and Monsters of Legend stand between Zagreus and the surface. Let's see if we can level the playing field a little bit. Hello everybody and welcome back to Matsimus, the game analysis channel dedicated to helping you get good at games. Now I've had a lot of comments recently asking me for tips on how to beat the bosses of the underworld. So today we're going to go over 11 uh, spoiler free build and combat tips uh, for clearing the bosses of the underworld. Now this topic is pretty complex so I've actually split this video into the build phase where we collect the best boss killing upgrades possible and then the combat phase where we actually repeatedly donkey punch various Greek legends into toga wrapped paste. Also, I will not be showing who the final boss is in this video, but I will be showing the arena and some of their attacks. Now, this isn't until phase two in the video, so if you don't want any spoilers at all, you can still watch phase one and learn my build tips for killing bosses. Now, with that warning out of the way, we have a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and get started. Part 1. Prepare to kill legends. Okay, in this section let's cover how to build Zagreus and pick your upgrades to go toe to toe with some of the biggest names in Greek mythology. We'll start with tip number 1, the boss slaying build. So first we're going to cover the best powers in the Mirror of Night for killing bosses. And don't worry, you don't need as much darkness as I have in order to unlock the key abilities. Now you're going to want to max your Shadow Presence, Chthonic Vitality, Death Defiance, Abyssal Blood, and Thick Skin power-ups. If you do need some help reaching this point in the Mirror of Night, you can check out my old 3 Essential Hades Beginner Tips video. I'll put it in the banner right here, that grey bar with an eye icon. So covering these Mirror of Night upgrades really quickly, backstabbing bosses is pretty easy, making Shadow Presence a no-brainer, and its Chthonic Vitality is a nice heal that works in the Temple of Sticks, helping you reach the final boss with near max health. Pick Death Defiance over Stubborn Defiance because you shouldn't be dying in regular rooms, it heals you for more, and any boss you confront with 3 Death Defiance is going down. You should also take Thick Skin to make clearing Tartarus and Asphodel easier and make it so that you need less maximum health power-ups. Finally, Abyssal Blood is a huge debuff to put on a boss, reducing their damage and making them easier to dodge, especially when you haven't cleared the Underworld and unlocked Demeter yet. The other upgrades are up to your preference, and I will say that you don't need the last four upgrades for your first few Underworld clears. Tip number two, create a Fury Slayer. In Tartarus, your goal is to create a linchpin attack by stacking a Boon, Daedalus Hammer, and Power Palm on a single attack. This attack will be your staple through Tartarus and most of Asphodel, and will make clearing the Fury Sister fight significantly easier. This step is not mandatory, but if you're having trouble passing Megara, it will help you out. Tip number three. Tell that Hydra to chill! After Tartarus, your goal is to calm down the hyperaggression of the remaining bosses. Pick up some control or damage prevention boons while also increasing your offensive boon collection as you travel through Asphodel and Elysium. Grabbing Divine Dash and a Weak Strike or Flourish from Aphrodite are two of the most beginner-friendly ways to add some defense to your build without investing tons of room rewards. If you've cleared the final boss already, then go ahead and pick up some Demeter boons as well so you can literally chill the bosses out while aggressively quoting Pulp Fiction. Tip number four, eat your protein. You are going to get hit when fighting bosses, and your maximum health is going to dictate whether you're down for the count or whether you're ready to slug them back. In general, I want to have 125 to 180 max health going into the Furies, 150 to 200 max health going into the Hydra, 180 to 250 max health when attacking the Champions of Elysium, and finally 200 to 280 max health when I'm going up against the final boss. This is why Thick Skin is part of the boss killing build, because without it you need to take a ton of centaur hearts or a few lucky soul boons from chaos. Tip number 5. Can't kill what you can't catch. Maneuverability is everything when it comes to fighting bosses. Take every single Hermes boon you see offered. Hyper Sprint, Greater Haste, Greatest Reflex, and Greater Evasion are the best boons for helping you kill bosses. Hermes other boons are also great, but pick up at least one or two of these boss killers before grabbing anything else. They are especially important for when you fight the final boss. Oh, and one more thing that came to mind uh, just as I was editing this, let's call this a bonus tip uh, because it's not exactly earth shattering, but you should really take the evergreen acorn once you reach sticks before you fight the final boss. Because, you know, he kind of does a lot of damage, and, I mean, yeah, not exactly the most complex pick. 
phase two boss fight boot camp. So now that we're ready to confront the worst that the underworld has to offer, let's talk about how to actually re-dead them. I'm going to be going over the general principles that anyone can use to kill any of the bosses, rather than the specific tactics for each boss. If you would like to see the more specific tactics for each boss, check out the Let's Play that I made accompanying this video. You can find it in the card up over here, and I'll also link it at the end screen of this video so you can watch the whole thing and then immediately see me apply them in the game. And another heads up, kinda almost spoilers up ahead. Tip number six, all bosses have the same attacks. Tip number six is that all the bosses actually share four basic move types. They have a thrust slash dash attack, they have a semicircular circular AOE attack that they'll launch around them, they have a projectile attack, and then they have an area of denial attack. Let's briefly go over how to deal with each of them. First, thrust slash dash attacks. They're quick with long reach, but low damage. What's important is that once the attack's preparation animation begins, bosses actually can't redirect the thrust, so dash to the side or behind them and get some free hits in. Each thrust also moves a boss forward, so meet them at the end of their movement to maximize the amount of free hits you get. Then we have the semicircular and circular attacks, which are slow but have high damage and reach. It's important to note that the Furies and Hydra remain stationary throughout the attack animation, but Theseus, Asterius, and the final boss are pulled forward during their circular attack animations. For these attacks, dash out of range and definitely not in the same direction as the boss is moving, as they will then almost certainly hit you. You can also dash through the attack if you're brave, though this is high risk, high reward. Boss ranged projectiles are actually pretty simple to deal with. In Tartarus and Asphodel, move and dash to avoid the attacks, or use a well-timed attack to destroy some of the flying projectiles coming your way. You can check out my 6 key Hades combat tips video for more information in the card up on the left. In Elysium and Styx, simply move in circles around Theseus and the final boss with your dash. You may be hit once or twice, but overall you'll avoid the projectiles no problem. The further from Theseus and the final boss you are, the more time you'll have to react and avoid their projectile. Lastly, we have Area of Denial attacks, which are how bosses force you to move when you don't want to. The Furies and Theseus create circles that release blasts after a moment to keep you dashing and running around, and the Hydra and final boss create traps and hazards around the arena for you to avoid and limit your mobility. Just focus on escaping the attack's area, and once you are more familiar with the attack timing, getting some cheap shots in on the boss. Tip number seven, there are two special boss moves. In addition to the four basic attacks, there are also two special boss moves. They can spawn additional enemies, and they can create green ring blast areas. The Furies, Hydra, and final boss all spawn enemies, though we don't have to worry about the extra enemies until the final boss. The Fury and Hydra arenas are large enough that they rarely become threatening. If the spawned enemies get too close, dash away to lure the boss or the enemies to you, killing the enemies if they approach you alone. However, the final boss spawns some super elites that you need to focus on killing before they become a problem. Focus on killing them between dodging the final boss's attacks. Additionally, the champions and the final boss can create these green ring blast attacks that I have named the Gerba. <laughs> these Gerba travel along the ground and cover most of the arena. Against the final boss, you can prevent the Gerba by killing the skull projectiles that are thrown on the ground. Eventually though, you will see a blast coming towards you. Run straight towards the center of the Gerba and dash through the green shockwave. If you run any other direction, your invincibility frames won't be enough to save you when you dash. Tip number eight, bosses move sluggishly. Now while bosses are pretty intimidating the first time you're standing in front of them, they actually move pretty sluggishly. Maybe it's their titanic strength slowing them down or something like that. Either way, there are three crucial openings that we need to take advantage of. Our first opening is when bosses begin an attack telegraph animation, which is the animation that plays when they begin an attack. Almost all attacks actually have one to two seconds of buildup before they are launched. The biggest exception of which are the final boss's thrust and projectile attacks, which execute in less than a second, and his circular spinning attack, which just has massive range. For all other attacks, you have time to land a melee strike before dashing away safely. 
In fact, many attacks such as Magra's thrusting dash and Asterius's overhead chop can be easily avoided with good positioning, allowing you to punish them freely for several seconds. Alternatively, you can focus on dodging and take advantage of opening 2. Opening 2 is immediately after a boss finishes an attack animation. Every boss has a refractory period after unleashing their damage burst, which as we men know, means the bosses are going to get a little drowsy and need some time to recover, which means it's the perfect time to get some low blows in. Each boss takes a few seconds to recover between attacks and this is actually our safest time to hit them. Our third opening is created because bosses actually don't track Zagreus as well as ordinary enemies. If you dash behind a boss, they need to complete any animations they are in, start a new attack sequence, or begin a move animation to turn to face you. This is the main reason that Backstab is still in the game, because it is a massive damage boost against every boss. Shadow Strike is probably my favorite hammer upgrade on this Stygian Blade because of the massive amount of boss killing power it adds to a build. Getting behind bosses is also the safest place to be and allows you to savage them while their back is turned. Tip number 9, be a leaf on the wind. Maneuverability is your number one defense against bosses. Being able to rapidly enter and exit engagement ranges, that is the range of the boss's current attack, is the difference between escaping the underworld and dying to the Hydra. As I mentioned in the previous tip, bosses are very sluggish and have long attack telegraphs. This means that with one or two dashes you can easily exit their threat range once you see their attack animation begin. However, the final boss is something of an exception to this, since his move telegraphs are much quicker and cover a larger area. This is why I recommend trying to get extra dashes and movement speed from Hermes in tip 5. With 4 dashes, you can cross the entire boss arena and easily reach safety, then dash to re-engage when the attack is over. Tip number 10, there is no timer. Tip number 10 is that there are no time constraints on you when you are fighting a boss, unless you take a specific pact of punishment. Bosses don't become more aggressive or more dangerous over time, so go ahead and disengage if you need a breather. Be patient, and remember that bosses only become more aggressive when their health drops, not when you pass the 5, 10, or even 15 minute mark. Tip 11, use your cast. Tip number 11 is to actually use our very easily overlooked cast. About mm, 1, 2, 10, 15, 20, about 2,000 words ago, I told you that Abyssal Blood is one of the key Mirror of Night power-ups for killing bosses. Well, it is, but not if you never remember to use your cast. Now, if you take the Dionysus, Ares, or Demir cast, you won't be able to make use of Abyssal Blood, but that is okay because each of these abilities does a massive amount of damage to bosses. They are also harder to forget about since they have big flashy animations, but it takes some practice to remember to always launch your true shot or divine shot. Remember that every time you stick a bloodstone in a boss with a max level abyssal blood, you reduce their damage by 25%, but more importantly, you slow them down by 25%. Remember tip 8 where we covered bosses moving sluggishly with several seconds of inactivity at the start and end of their attacks? Imagine extending their attacks telegraph, strike, and recovery animation by 25% so you can punch them longer or escape attacks easier. If you haven't escaped the underworld that first time and unlocked Demeter yet, this power is especially strong and is tailor-made for players seeking to kill the final boss that first time, so make sure to take advantage of it. I feel the loss of Abyssal Blood every time I take Boiling Blood and reach the final boss. Be better than me. Wow, this one took a long time to put together, you guys. If you enjoyed this video, or if you just like keeping me up at night editing, uh, go ahead and throw me a like and subscribe below. While you're down there, leave me a comment about what guide you would like to see next, or leave a tip for other beginners who come to this video about what you wish you had known when you first started playing Hades. Thank you to everyone who has watched until the end of the video. It's been a lot of fun to chat with you guys in the comments and answer your questions down there as well. Thank you again for watching. I will see you in the next video. And remember, there is no escape.